Ladies and gentlemen, I come before you this evening because a lot of things have been said about me in the media the past few days, and unfortunately, my appearance on the Sunday show the other day with little Chuck Todd, who doesn't really seem to want to put me in the best light when I am out there trying to talk about the important issues of the day, like this climate that is on fire, the fact that we have a student debt crisis that is growing exponentially every day, endless wars overseas, endless wars at home against the working class. We still are dealing with the fact that we do not have real criminal justice reform in this country, hence a 60-year anniversary of marching on Washington, which I did do, by the way, even though the Clintons tried to pretend like I wasn't actually out there marching on Washington and, of course, supporting Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., as I still do to this day. For those of you who are here and want to learn a little bit more about what it is that we're fighting for, well, you've come to the right place. I did not exactly make the best impression on TV the other day, and I wanted to come on here and correct a few things. Number one, I am a fierce supporter of universal health care. It is a human right, and it is the biggest impediment to working people succeeding in this country today. So I want to reiterate that point that I do support universal health care for every man, woman, and child in this country. That is number one. Number two, we are living in an existential crisis in the environment. We are seeing record heat waves, major storms, and endless plight for countless people who seriously cannot afford to live, much less deal with the ramifications of big storms. We must deal with the reality that people cannot afford to live because we do not have a living wage. We can no longer deny these realities when it comes to unionizing in this country, I'm very proud to see that steps are being taken by, in very small doses, this current administration's right to allow unionization. But we simply cannot accept the future where we are going to crush unions. That is for the days of Ronald Reagan, not for the days of today. In addition, we have to recognize that the youth in this country are in very deep trouble economically and they are demanding new potential future that involves them having the opportunity to go to school and not be in crippling debt for the rest of their lives we cannot just cancel student debt we must make public colleges and universities tuition free period criminal justice reform while many think it's a difficult task to obtain, we can not deny that if we simply use the stroke of the executive pen, we could decriminalize cannabis. Frankly, we could decriminalize all drugs and we could expunge nonviolent drug offender records to allow them to integrate back into society. We have to deal with the reality that endless war is a waste of time money, resources, and innocent lives. We cannot deny nor ignore the crises that are facing our country today in so many different places, whether it is in East Palestine, Ohio, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Maui, Hawaii, and many, many other places in between. With the soon coming hurricane that is going to devastate the state of Florida, it is going to be just as bad as the hurricane Hillary, no pun intended, it's the hurricane that just hit California. I come here this evening to mention all of these things because, as you all know, I am a very big supporter of working class people in America. They have been suffering for far too long. And it is at this moment that I recognize that some of the things I may have said on TV the other day are simply not true. If there is one person who is running for president of the United States right now, who embodies all the policies and the energy that the country desperately needs right now. There is no question who that person is. That person has been at my side since I got into this ridiculous political fight back in the summer of 2015, thinking that I could start a political revolution in America. And who knows, maybe we're not that far away from it at this point. But that person who has stood by my side for many, many years, has fought valiantly 
for the working people of this country, and especially working people of color, who have always felt the short end of the stick when it came to opportunity in this country. And on the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington, I am here today to let you know that I am rescinding my endorsement of President Biden and changing it to that of Dr. Cornell West. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering why would I make such a dramatic decision here tonight? Well, the truth is our country is going to help. And no more obvious is that than with current President Joe Biden somehow, some way losing in the polls to Donald Trump. Now, as you can see, I am an old man. I have done my best to try to change this country for the better, but I am certainly in no position to run for president again. I simply don't have the energy, and I'm now going to sleep at a more respectable time of about 8 p.m. every night. Lord knows at this stage of my life, I need to do this. But a lot of you out there have a lot more life to live, and you are very concerned about your future. I'm concerned about your future. And I am very concerned about what our current president and his administration are doing for the working people of this country. And they are simply not doing enough. In fact, if they were doing even slightly enough, we would not be in this predicament of seeing another possibility of a President Donald Trump in the White House again, even if he has to run from a jail cell. Think about how crazy that sounds. So I am here to tell you that if you are considering supporting a candidate for president of the United States who most aligns with my ideals and my policies that I have been espousing for the better part of a decade, I would definitely recommend giving Dr. West your support. He could certainly use a lot of it right now. And as far as I'm concerned, I know the Democrats are going to hate me for saying this, but if in fact the needle is moved to the populist left where it belongs, and Dr. West is able to garner a lot of support and a lot of momentum, I'd like to believe that the Democratic Party will have no choice but to move to the populist left themselves to avoid losing to Donald Trump and the GOP in 2024. There are many great things that this nation is capable of doing, and I truly believe that that is possible, but it will not be if we stay on the same course that we're stuck on right now. So make sure that you check out Dr. Cornell West, his policies, what he's fighting for, and the help that he needs in order to become a viable candidate, regardless of party, in the 2024 election. Should he become viable, he will change the course of history. And I look forward to seeing him do that. Lord knows at this time in my life, I should be taking the type of chances that the American people desperately need. I cannot sit on the sideline. And I will not pretend that we are heading in the right direction anymore. So with all due respect to my good friend Joe and to the Democratic Party, we need to have a political revolution in this country. And that simply will not happen unless we are supporting the right candidate at the right time. Get out there, support Dr. Cornell West. Thank you all very much. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.